Hello and welcome, my name is Matt Taylor, and in this video I will be upgrading the firmware in Microcom's GTX 2.0 Satellite Data Transmitter and Logger. As you can see, I have already downloaded the executable and hex files I will need for this upgrade. The upgrade utility can be downloaded from Microcom's website, and the hex files can be emailed as needed. The first step is to launch the upgrade utility on a Windows-based PC with an RS-232 serial port or a serial to USB dongle. The version of the upgrade utility is displayed in the lower right hand corner of the GUI, seen here as version 2.18. Looking at the lower left hand corner, it can be seen that no COM port is currently selected. We will need to select the COM port that will be used to program the GTX. This can be done under the Preferences menu and choosing the COM port selection and in my case I'm using a serial to USB dongle so I'll need to manually type in COM port 31 by selecting the More menu option and typing in 31. Clicking the OK button will enter the selection. In the lower left hand corner it can be now seen that the COM port has changed from None to 31. Next we're going to make sure that we've got the GTX connected and powered. We can see that the power light is flashing and the serial port is connected, meaning that the GTX is ready to be reprogrammed. Now we can click the current version button to clear the GTX for its current firmware versions and the serial number. It is recommended at this time to document the current firmware version and serial number for purposes of traceability. Two firmware versions are reported, the main processor's firmware version and the TKM's firmware version. In my case, the main processor is reporting version 2.28 and the TKM processor is reporting version 4.6. Knowing the main firmware version number is 2.28, and my serial number, I know that the GTX should be updated to main version 2.30 and TKM version 5.0. The next step is to select the firmware images to be sent to the GTX. Using the file menu, I can select the GTX program file option. This will pop up a window where we can see that the firmware version is gtx2 underscore main underscore v230.hex. Once that's selected, click the open button and that will select the file to be programmed for the main gtx. The same process needs to happen for the tkm processor. By selecting the tkm program file, this will pop up another window where we can select the tkm program file which is gtx2 underscore tkm underscore v50 underscore f920 dot hex. Clicking the open button while well selected and we can see that the desired files are selected and they're displayed in the appropriate group boxes. Now that the desired files are selected we need to check the check boxes to the left of the main and tkm group boxes so that they can be designated to be programmed. Now we can click the program button. This will pop up a window showing the programming process for the first main processor. The process of programming the main processor is to first verify that the link has been established between the PC program and the GTX. Next, the PC program sends a command to the GTX to put it into bootloader mode. After that's completed, the PC program and the GTX will synchronize. Then the PC program will command the GTX to erase the current firmware and then the PC program will begin downloading the firmware into the GTX. Once the programming has been completed, the GTX will immediately begin programming the TKM processor.
Now we can see that the TKM is being reprogrammed with the same steps that the main processor was reprogrammed. Once the reprogramming operation is complete, the application will automatically restart the GTX and request the new firmware status. It can be seen that this GTX is now reporting a main firmware version of 2.30 and a TKM version of 5.0. The GTX has now been successfully updated. It is recommended to log the updated firmware version now. The GTX is ready to be configured and deployed. And remember, if the GTX was already configured in situ, it will need to be enabled before it will begin making transmissions. The deployment process is discussed in another video. This video is a condensed version of the information contained in Appendix C of the GTX manual. If you are in need of more detail regarding the upgrade utility, the GTX manual covers all the features of the upgrade utility in depth. If you are having trouble with your GTX, please do not hesitate to call or email. Thank you for watching.